In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions, taking a look at the tropics as well as the overall pattern coming up, and then some severe weather as well. Let's just get straight into things though, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery. As always, we have to take we have to take a little bit of a look here at the northwest because there is some showers moving on shore that, that we could see. Some lighter showers along the Rockies here, as you can see, scattered about. So we see those going on. We also see some thunderstorms around for the southeast in here. This is going to continue, so we need to talk about that. And then we have some showery and potentially thunderstorm activity going on up here for the northeastern corner of the nation. So there is quite a bit to go over today. Let's just take a look here first things first at the northwest we did have some lighter showers going on here around the cascades and just to the east of the cascades that was already going on but now we're seeing a pocket of heavier showers and more persistent showers moving towards uh overall the washington area seattle you're going to start to get impacted by this even up in vancouver as well uh, going to get impacted by these heavier showers that are going to be moving through the region now oregon you might get dodged a little bit there especially the further south you go uh, so it might be a little less rainy up there, or down there, better yet. Now here is the lighter showers. We can tell that there's not a lot of yellows, not even a lot of darker greens going on. This is mostly lighter greens that we're seeing for most folks in here. It's indicating very light showers at this point is what is mostly going on. Uh, our yellows and oranges that we could see up there for northern Montana is a heavier pocket of showers, but that is the only area really experiencing that at this point within here. Uh, as we move further south, we can see that there is quite a bit of activity down there for the four corner states moving up through Mexico as well. So at this point, that is what we are seeing. Now, as we move down to the southeast, we can see there is just this thunderstorm activity, mostly isolated here for uh, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas. Even most of Mississippi is pretty isolated, but we have these scattered about areas in here where we're seeing a little bit more persistent uh, thunderstorm activity, potentially this heading towards Atlanta is going to build back in a little bit, but that has really dissipated over the last couple of hours. And then we just have the showers up here for the Carolinas as well. As we move further south towards Florida, no surprise here, we do have some isolated thunderstorms around, mostly north of Tampa Bay. They were around for the Everglades earlier. So this is typical tropical Florida weather, honestly. Uh, nothing to see here, really. Now we do have First off, on the southern end here, we had some severe thunderstorm warnings. I can see that popped up in there. So this was thunderstorms that swung around underneath for uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Long Island even down there. But it looks like the further north you go, the more this just looks like heavier showers around. There could be a crack of thunder up here for southern New England. Wouldn't be surprised about that. Uh, but for the most part, it looks like the entire region is going to be dealing with heavier showers in those very large areas of yellows and even some oranges popping up and darker greens. Uh, expect a lot of rainfall with this system as it moves through. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the upcoming pattern. Again, we're going to talk about that upcoming tropical activity potentially, and then we're going to break down uh, that upcoming severe weather as well. Now here we are taking a look at those upcoming storminess uh, and, and really just the upcoming simulated radar. We do get some thunderstorm activity here in the south central United States as we approach tomorrow morning. Also, this showery activity continues for the northwest. But for the east, everything heads offshore, as you can see. We see everything's kind of lifted off there. Now, by the time we're reaching uh, that afternoon, it's about the same story. Saturday afternoon, that's going to be the 11th. We see a lot of stormy activity kind of re uh, reform here for the eastern United States. There's also some of that for the upper Midwest up here. And still, the northwestern United States is dealing with that. Our jet stream by this point is doing something like this, a bit of a trough here in the eastern United States and some ridging here in the western United States as well that is ongoing here. Sunday, we could see that there is a larger storm system than we've been seeing up there for the northwest that is developing, so that looks pretty intense. Uh, also, some other storminess along this jet stream. Again, the jet stream is probably moving in about like this. So we are seeing a lot of the storminess around that jet stream. This is fairly typical. Um, let's just move this towards Monday. It's going to be Monday, June 13th. We see some snow begin for this area as some cold cold air is able to make its way down. The jet stream by this point is doing about like this. So we see that cold air is able to make its way in through the northwest here. A lot of the warmer air is actually to the east of this low here. So the low we see is right here in 991. So probably a cold front developing underneath. Warm front up here over top that we can see. That is why the warm air is really... Uh, surging up here 
just to the east of that storm system. We still have some colder air here for the northeast, but this will probably lift off as well uh, by the time we're reaching Tuesday. We're seeing that begin to happen as the trough is very dramatic by this point, just like this. So still some colder air up here for New England and eastern Canada here. But for the most part, a lot of warm air is able to make its way into the eastern half of the nation overall. So something like this is what we're seeing. Uh, and a lot of this cold air is especially making its way into the Rockies through there. We have a 993 millibar low pressure center um, that has this warm front over top. So we're seeing something like that as far as the pattern by the time we're reaching Tuesday, June 14th. Wednesday, June 15th, things get a lot quieter. I'm not even really going to talk about much other than the jet stream here. We do have a large ridge here, to say the least. Uh, very, very warm air is able to make its way up pretty far north there. Uh, we have a lot of cold air making its way into the west here by this point, though. So something like this is what we're seeing with the temperature pattern. We will see the actual temperature pattern in a little bit. Uh, we can see that a cold front does develop here. So the jet stream is doing something like this. Really crazy ridge there in the east, um, but there is a cold front that's going to allow for some of this storminess to really spread in through these areas I just circled. I know it's hard to see because there's a ton going on here. And by Friday afternoon, we can tell that that cold front is swinging underneath here uh, for the eastern half of the nation. And this is bringing some thunderstorm activity by Friday, June 17th here to the eastern United States. Uh, and it looks like we get a ridge in the west with a little bit of a less, less ridgy looking pattern in the east. It still looks like a ridge to me, though. The biggest trough here looks to be for the West Coast, in my opinion. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, talk about that 10-day uh, total rainfall here. So as you can see, if you're anywhere in the white, you're expecting practically no precipitation. Grays will be a tenth of an inch or less. Greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch of precipitation. Your blues are going to be half an inch to an inch. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. And then we're moving into the above average areas now. So the reds... If you're in the red, you expect above average precipitation for this 10-day period, most likely. Two to even five inches of rainfall over the next 10 days, which is a lot for a 10-day period. And even the browns especially, if there is any browns around, I guess there's a couple pockets. If you happen to be under one of those, then you're looking at about five to 10 inches of precipitation over the next 10 days, which is almost certainly above average for wherever you're at. For total snowfall here, if you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. Blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples will be 6 to 10. Your pinks will be 10 to 20. And then your pastels will be 20 inches plus. We have quite a bit of snowfall expected for the Rockies and the Cascades, actually. I expected this number to keep dwindling down, but it actually has increased over the past couple of days. So we're going to really keep a diligent eye on this situation and see if this looks to continue to increase or if we see this being kind of our last snowstorm. So I'll keep an eye on that for you guys. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and take a look at the overall temperature pattern that is upcoming. All right, now here we are taking a look. Let's see by this afternoon what we're seeing is a ridge in the east here, a bit of a trough here for the interior of the United States. The east coast, though, is able to get some warm air heading up here, uh, but the west is certainly in a ridge-like pattern, and then we have cold air swinging underneath here. That's the look by Thursday or today, later today. Friday, the cold air is able to set itself in a little bit more here for the eastern United States. We think we see things really cool down here. Uh, Saturday, we see this cold air infiltrating. So into the west is going to cause the warm air to lift into the eastern United States, which is going to cause the cold air to lift out. So we're going to see everything rotate around. Sunday, watch it happen. Monday, high temperatures. And then Tuesday, high temperatures. You see how we did a complete swing and now the jet stream is doing about like this. Uh, we have way warmer air here for the eastern United States now and the central United States. And then we have a lot of cold air making its way down and through the western United States. So that is the look at this point by the time reaching Tuesday the 14th. Wednesday the 15th, we can see where that cold front is right here. But we still see that warm air surging out ahead of it. So we see lots of warm air all the way, way up into Canada up here, as you can see. There's a lot of warm air and then there's a lot of cold air bottled up here in the west. Uh, for Thursday, things get a little bit warmer out west. Things get a little less warm out in the east, so things are getting interesting here. Um, Friday, we have mostly warm for the central United States, central western United States. Cold along the eastern seaboard here, and cold along the western seaboard as well by that point. Uh, and then for Saturday, uh, again, this is the frame where I said I think the biggest trough is in the west, and it certainly is by this point. Although there's mostly just warmer temperatures for everywhere compared to what is typical, so that's fairly interesting to say the least, I would say. Now let's take a look at some of that chalk black activity. Here's our 500 millibar uh, cyclonic relative vorticity. 
and this is going to show us any large areas of rotation. Now, the interesting thing is the area we're going to watch is called our MDR, our main development region. Typically, you're watching for waves to head off of Africa and head through this region like this. Um, and so I'm going to circle it again. Just pay attention to this area here, okay, as we play things on. So, no, let's see, no waves yet. As we keep going, look at that one right there, just moving offshore of Africa. If you watch it right there, it's going to be Monday, June 13th, just a few days from now. And that wave gets going. That's an actual tropical wave, I would say, uh, moving offshore of Africa. And again, the one I'm referencing is right here. So this area right here, it starts out over here, then it moves to here. So I'll, I'll remove that from your screen real quickly. There it is. And that one really kind of dissipates, but it is the first kind of tropical wave coming off of Africa of the season, so it is worth noting. And then we actually get a second one here that we can see by the time we're reaching Saturday, June 18th, uh, that likely is going to take that same track. So we're starting to get things going with these tropical waves off of Africa, which is usually a sign that the tropics are getting rolling, and we're going to start to see more activity in about a month or so. Uh, we are getting very close to that time of year, guys, so we need to pay attention to this closely. And keep in mind, I will watch this daily for you guys, so I can make sure to update you guys on anything uh, that I might see on here. And if I don't mention it, it's probably because I didn't see anything. So keep in mind, tune in with us daily. If I mention it, that means I saw something. Now, watching the GFS... We're going to compare here. Uh, the GFS goes a little bit further. We do get that first tropical wave. This is Monday, June 13th. So both models are in agreement that we get this tropical wave there off of Africa. And you see it move up. We get a second one here from the GFS by Friday, June 17th. Again, here's the first one. So this is the first one. This is the second one right there. Uh, and none of those really get going. We get a fourth, a fifth, we get multiple tropical waves, but you probably missed it, but watch this area in here. We see something develop right here, and it likes to head it like this. Uh, the GFS tends to do this, though, pretty often, but look at that um, tropical system it has going and then eventually hitting Florida, and we can't really rule it out because that's very similar to what just happened recently, a very uh, strong tropical storm in this, in this instance here. So we'll have to wait and see. That is 200 hours out, so take it with a grain of salt. But this one does have a homegrown system, kind of take a track like this and just kind of head up the East Coast. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. Now, what we're going to do, last but not least, is take a look at that upcoming severe weather. Now, here is your day one categorical outlook. And if you're anywhere in the lighter greens, we have a general thunderstorm risk. But don't rule out any severe weather. I'm certainly not because anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory, even if you're in the white region or the lighter green regions. Now, for the darker green areas, that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. It's called our marginal risk area. And then the, the really large yellow area there is what we call our slight risk, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to be able to take place within all of those areas. Now, for the individual outlooks, first things first, our wind outlook. This is all based on 25 miles of a given location. So, for instance, our green area is a 5% chance, so... Uh, if your house is in the green area, that means there's a 5% chance that within 25 miles of your house, there will be damaging wind. That's how it works. So, for the green region, we have a 5% chance, like I said. The yellow area, there's a 15% chance there within there. And then we have the hatched area for the plains as well. And that's where we expect especially damaging wind to be possible within there. It will be possible anywhere, but the ingredients just seem right for really damaging wind there within that black hatched area there. Now, for the day one hail outlook, we have a 5% chance in the green again, a 15% chance in the yellow again, and then that hatched area again for Kansas and Nebraska, where we expect a especially large hail, 2-inch diameter or larger hail to be possible. Now, for the tornado outlook, we have a 2% chance there for Nebraska and for Kansas. Now, for day two, which is going to be for Friday, June 10th, we have a general thunderstorm risk again in the lighter green areas, where... Again, we don't expect severe weather, but anything is possible. The darker green area there for the deep south is going to be our marginal risk, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then the yellow area uh, is our slight risk region where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible. Now for day three, Saturday, June 11th, we only have a general thunderstorm risk there, as you can see for a lot of folks. A very large light green region, but we only expect general thunderstorms at this point for Saturday, June 11th. We'll have to see if this continues to look this way or still eventually add a marginal risk at least 
Only time we'll be able to tell it is three days out, so it wouldn't surprise me either way. But this is the first day in a very long time that we haven't at least had a marginal risk, which is pretty interesting. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we've obviously talked about a lot of things, but we're at a four out of six uh, for a few reasons. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dove Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Mike Pudalasa, Catbite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.